What is up, everybody? Keith Jameson, aka Gator Guy 231. And guys, NASCAR is bleeping back. And uh, we don't have iRacing. We don't have uh, go kart racing. There was never go kart, but we have real drivers, real cars, real tracks. And I am so stoked to uh, be talking to Andrew Berry, aka Mega Ruler. You uh, know him from the KBO pods. And happy to have. Uh, one of the OGs at FSI, Tim Knotts, a.k.a. TK Nation, um, on the uh, recording today. Guys, how are y'all doing? Pretty good. How about Pretty you? Good. Good, good. And, and, you know, special shout out to TK. Normally, he doesn't get up before noon. So, <laughs> um, we're recording this early Saturday morning. So, uh, he was so stoked to be able to talk NASCAR. Uh, we, we got him out of his bed. You, you hanging in there, TK? Yeah, I'm awake. Coffee All rules right. the world, right? Hey, as long as you don't start thinking that these guys are going to turn right, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. Four good. left turns, I'm hoping. All right. Well, we have a good show for planned for you guys. We're going to be going over some top picks, some strategies, um, and just overall kind of what to target. This is a you – know, so tell me this, guys. Like, I don't play a ton of NASCAR, but this is the biggest prize pool we've ever had for NASCAR, right? Uh, pretty much. They do some big stuff for Daytona, but this seems like a pretty substantial um, pack. Biggest one ever for May. We'll say yeah. that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Anything that's not Daytona or Talladega, this is the biggest. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy to think about um, some of the other bigger races coming up, maybe what they'll do if uh, some of the big leagues aren't up. So this is a great primer, a great time for you guys to jump in. Um, our content this weekend is free. Um, we'll be posting um, some of the projections and all the data you could ever have that Andrew works up for all of our NASCAR subscribers weekly. It's all free this weekend. So make sure that you join up, get to talk to these two guys in Discord and uh, let, let, let's crush and make some money. So I'm going to kick it to you, TK, to start. Talk to us a little about the track and kind of what racers you are thinking that are going to kind of do well. Like what type or profile are we looking for? All right, Darlington. It was built in 1950. It's 1 1.3 miles. It's just short of the half mile, mile and a half. It's a uh, flat track, no recent reef pave. It's one of the oldest in NASCAR. Uh, you'll see a lot, of, a lot of teams do the throwback schemes for the broadcast. It's kind of like the, I don't know what would you say. It's like the globe trotter of the NASCAR world track. And uh, kind of drivers that do well are type of drivers that are Got a lot of experience handling tires, Keslowski's, Kyle Bush's, people that have been around a while, people that have uh, have had their their tires on the track a few times around this this uh, track. So it's it's going to be a lot about experience. Okay, so it's a lot of the household names. So somebody that's not huge in the NASCAR. When I look down at my lineup, I should I should have an idea of these guys, and I'm probably yeah, you should there. know who you're looking at. I, I love it. So, um, Andrew, what do you think about strategy? I, I, you know, I know a lot of times we talk about the, the certain tracks being um, more prone for dominators, certain ones we're really looking for place differential, or, you know, even some of these restrictor races, you know, I've heard popular strategy being all back of the pack guys to avoid crashes. What are we looking at uh, for Darlington? Well, I don't think you have to worry about avoiding crashes. I mean, there are some crashes at Darlington, but this is a track where you could uh, spin out and not cause a caution. <clears throat> there was one that was almost like Daytona. The end of last um, one uh, guy cut down a tire and took out a couple people, but it's usually a pretty clean race, although they haven't been out there for a while. So who knows what might happen with this one. So strategy-wise, like uh, picking household names, people that have experience, um, bigger teams probably because there's no practice with this. They're coming right pretty much off the hauler and they're getting on the racetrack. Uh, NASCAR set it up that they're going to run 30 laps and then they're going to have a competition caution. So everybody has to pit and they're, they're social distancing the pitting because they're going to pit in groups of 20. So the first group of 20 pits, the second group of 20 pits and the third group of 20 pits, but they freeze their position. So nobody loses anything. They just have to make sure that they get back out on the track before the pace car comes around again. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, that was, I, that, I I not know. wow. Just, just hearing that actually, I, I might actually watch my first race. And that's like that's not going to be going for a while. That's awesome. That, that'll be, be really interesting. 
this could be the future of NASCAR though too, because with like the whole pandemic and teams losing money and, and stuff. And they talked about doing like no live pits and Xfinity and the truck series a couple of times as an experiment. It's a way to save what? money. If you, you don't have to have like an elite pit crew, you can have anybody there as long as they get the car out before the pace car. I mean, we could see this more and more. So, so let me ask you this and Tim, it sounds like you kind of didn't even see all, all this stuff, but so do we think that, does that bring some of the top teams down that, you know, maybe had an advantage in the pit or do we think that's still, it's still car setup that we're really wanting to do and the top teams are still going to have the best cars. So that's going to even like push them further ahead. What, what are your, your y'all's thoughts on that? Absolutely. It's going to be car setup and you really worry about some of these smaller teams that haven't touched a car in a month, a month and a half, because like in practice, you find out that this hose is leaking or my oil pressure is too low or like this just isn't yep. working. They, they don't have that where you have these like bigger teams. They've got books and books of data, years of years of experience they can share from one another. So. And going back to pit, pit is going to be a huge thing. Even last year when they had practices and they had qualifying and everything was at normal, last year the race was pretty much won on pit strategy because this is a very hard track to pass on. It's a, mm -hmm. um, the package that they run in, it has um, low horsepower, high downforce, so the cars are glued to the track. Um, you run an upper groove next to the wall, and in, unless you're like a really good side drafter, you drop down, like cars are going to pass you. You're going to lose like multiple spots. It's very, very hard to pass. So where do you make up the time? You make it up in the pits. Interesting. Interesting. TK, before we jump in and picks, do you have anything else to add on uh, strategy type or the drivers to look at? No, that was perfectly said by Mega. I couldn't agree more. Yep. It's all about, all about gaining position on the pits. So, so it kind of sounds like to me, we're going to be jumping first off into, into cash and we're going to go from kind of the top down. I'm um, obviously, you know, if we're going to be playing some of the, you know, the, the studs and the top guys, you know, we're going to still need some value, but we're going to start at the, the top um, of the pricing tier. And Andrew, I kind of want you to go over um, as mostly a cash player, talk to us about, uh, you know, maybe what the building blocks are or, or kind of the cash pool. And as you do that, I'm going to be pulling up um, your projections. Now we do have this sorted um, by uh, the DK point projections coming um, that Andrew did. So uh, take it away, buddy. So for the projection sheet, one thing that I want to point out to the um, people that go on um, the site to view it when we post it is that you're going to see times for practice speeds and for qualifying, which obviously didn't happen. So what I did was I took the 2019 data, figuring that the cars are similar, the drivers are similar. Um, you're going to see times for Matt Kenseth. I took um, pretty much um, Joe or um, Larson's um, data from last year, figuring it's kind of the same cars, same team. Um, so just kind of put them together just to, you know, so we had some data to kind of yeah. look at just to see kind of how they performed last year under kind of pretty much a similar package. Love so that. That's where that came from. So how this race is going to start out is you're going to have Brad Kreslowski um, in the starting in the on the pole, and then you're going to have um, so there's going to be a huge debate between he and Alex Bowman of uh, you know who's going to get out and who's going to lead. And a lot of people think that this race is going to start out and it's going to be like you know maybe they're going to be racing 70, 75, 80 percent. They're not going to go into a full force because they need to get a feel for the car. They need to kind of you know treat it as a, a practice until you get to this competition caution. Now there's a couple drivers that probably won't get that. Maybe some of your younger um, guys that just came up from the Xfinity series or Ricky Stenthouse Jr. I think he runs 120 percent no matter like what the situation is. Probably even on the pace lap and uh, caution laps. But so so hopefully you know it, it, the first it, it might be like a parade the first one's round. So you know some people are going to start out and start their lineups with Kozlowski or Bowman figuring one of those two is going to get out. They're going to have the fastest laps. They're going to start accumulating some D point K points there and uh, on FanDuel also. But the one I'm really looking at is Kevin Harvick up top. Mm -hmm. um, he's got four top tens this year, two top fives. He hasn't won yet, but he's got so many things going for him. He was first um, in points. So he got the first pit stall, but he's not starting uh, first because of the whole drawing thing. He's actually starting uh, where is this here? in the sixth position. Six, so, yeah. I mean, 
So that gives him opportunity for five differential points, which isn't huge like coming from the back, but in this race where it might be very hard to pass, um, it's, it's very key. And we talked about pit strategy and he this year has like one of the best pit crews going. So if you look at the top five pit crews, it's he, then Kyle Busch, then Kurt Busch, then Logano, then Blaney in uh, trying to service cars and getting them back out there and making up time. I, I think that's where you can do it. And being a veteran, as you said before, uh, he really knows how to run on these. This track is very hard on tires and he knows how to conserve his tires. So, you know, he's definitely the guy I'm starting at up top. Like it. TK, what, why don't you jump in? What, uh, what are some other guys? Do you have another top guy kind of alongside of, of Harvick? I was thinking maybe Kyle Busch like that. as another dominator. He's starting fourth. He's led 716 laps in all his races at Darlington, which is first among active drivers. I, you know, he's kind of like a menace, you know. Whenever Kyle Busch gets out front, it's kind of hard to pass him. And like Gamega has been referring to, it's hard to pass on these tracks. So we're still doing live pitting, and Kyle Busch is up front seeing first all day. It's going to be hard to pass him, and he could dominate this race. I like it. So, so that, that's great for the users. We got the two uh, most expensive guys out of the way for y'all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so, okay. That's how it is. Yeah, oh, I, I, I get it. So let, let's talk about um, some, other, some other cash guys. Uh, Andrew, I'll kick it to you. Um, the next guy I really like is uh, Kyle's brother, Kurt Busch. Um, mm -hmm. He's a veteran racer. Last seven races here, he's finished fourth, ninth, seventh, fourth, second, 13th and first he's won it three times so he really knows what he's doing in this track the nice thing about him is he's starting 22nd Ooh. and I believe he can have a top 10 car so I mean there's a lot of place differential points there uh, he knows the track he knows what he's doing um, he's he, he's a good driver and uh, you know he's he's one of the ones that falls on having a good pit crew so I think everything adds up there to be a very solid cash play I like that I, I don't play a ton, but I know point differential or place differential is, is a huge thing. So, um, TK, how about another one for you? Anybody else on from a cash pool closer to the top stick out? Uh, you could look at someone like Denny Hamlin. He's won twice at Darlington in his career with seven top fives and 14 races. Uh, he's kind of been on a tear this year. He won Daytona. He's uh, won, he won a couple iRacing events. He's kind of got a championship team this year. I really like Denny to win it. So I'm, I've been kind of targeting him in basically any race format this year. And starting position of 10. So I, I yeah. see Andrew has him projected at two. So there's not only maybe some lap, laps red, but some place differential points too. Yeah, um, the top five would be great. Let's talk about Andrew. I, I see uh, two names I want to bring up to you that you have projected fairly high and their salary sticks out to me. Talk to me about uh, Tyler Reddick and uh chris boucher uh chris boucher i really like him. he's he's kind of like and he's a perfect play gator because i know you like the steady eddie sometimes vanilla cash plays this guy just goes out there he does his job he's probably not going to win a race but he's not going to lose um ground either he's starting 24th i see him my sheet has him up to 11 but even if he gets into the top 15 i mean there's place differential points he's out there keeps it clean, you know, he's just going to earn you points and be like that solid fill-in in your lineup. Reddick is a, is a rookie driver, and he um, he's finished no – in Infinity, he's been at least in the top 16. Um, actually, he's actually run this race um, – he was third and second too. So, so he's got some experience here, but the thing about Tyler Reddick – is that he knows how to run the groove. He is a high track driver and the groove on this track is up against the wall and that's where he likes to run. So if this one had a like a lower groove, then he would be out of his um, comfort zone and really wouldn't do well. But I really foresee him um, doing well just because of the style of driver he is. I love that, I love that. Uh, Tim, what, what do you think of any other guys in that kind of that mid to low range um, anybody kind of popping to you or somebody that you're finding in builds early on? For cash, I, I think sticking to someone like Reddick and Bush would probably be your best bet. Like it. I like it. So now mm -hmm. we're going to go move over, though, into Tim's uh, zone, which is – and if you haven't followed <laughs> TK before, TK loves to – and I, I think <laughs> what makes, what's given him some huge wins in his career is really trying to um, 
you know, zig when others zag or try to find some guys that, uh, you know, might not be talking about the consensus, but there's an angle. So TK, why don't you talk to us about some of the top GPP plays, any salary right now? So my number one GPP that play this week is Eric Jones. I'm high on Eric Jones. He's got three races at Darlington and three top tens. His lowest finish, I think, was uh, – I think he won Darlington in 2018, and he went eighth in like his, like his highest finish in those three races. He really does well at this track. It seems to be his bread and butter, these Chicago land, Darlington's, these mile-and-a-half short flat tracks. So I'm high on Eric Jones. He's starting 20th. Yeah. He's got he's got the team to back him. He's he's a young driver, and I, I I'm big on bullish on on Mr. Eric Jones this week. Love that. Well, who else near the top or maybe in the middle? Who else is sticking out to you, Tim? For my for my value, I'm pretty sold on Ryan Priest. Yeah, I know he's starting 25th, and there's a lot of room for error, especially for a, a driver that probably is going to have to battle with. A ton of good talent in that range, but he has a 20-second finish. I think it was last year at Darlington, and he was not on a he wasn't on a uh, a big team at that time. So he really made a he really made his mark with a small team at this track last year. He's on a better team this year, I believe. Priest is with JTG Doherty, so he's yep. got a better team backing him this year. Uh, another guy I like is John Hunter Nemechek for value. He's starting 34th and he's running with front row motorsports. He's in one of the young gunners in the, in the, in the sport. Uh, he's got, uh, you know, he's new to the track and I know I alluded to experience being the big thing for this NAS for this track, but John Hunter has got a dad that raced in NASCAR for God, 30, 30 plus years, still racing in trucks to the day. So he's got a lot of, family lineage and in, in history that he can use to his advantage. I love that. Uh, Andrew, any um, GPP kind of specials for you stick out that maybe, you know, your projections aren't, aren't popping or somebody maybe that it, it is and you kind of want to bring up? Um, Jimmy Johnson could be a, a dark horse. Definitely. Um, uh, any, any of the Hendricks cars could really do well. I'm kind of hesitant on Bowman, like, starting at like second because there's like a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. for him to drop and lose points but you know Chase Elliott uh, kind of pops there on, on the top um, I know like a, a dart that some people might take is um, Matt Kenseth I mean he hasn't raced in a couple years he he took over for Carl Larson so they have got a decent team and a decent setup but yeah, you know, how, 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 too. how rusty is um, I know a lot of people will be on um, Ryan Newman they don't know like how he's going to do he's been out for a couple right. months after that huge crash they had in um, Daytona is very scary but you know he, he's back he's a veteran he knows what he's doing he's very very tough to pass um, and we don't know how other drivers are going to to treat him if it might be like with kid gloves or a little bit you know a mm -hmm. touchy like you know so, after seeing how he got wrecked you know they don't want to be the one to wreck him again so yeah. No, that's that's interesting, interesting strategy there. Now, I, I didn't kind of prepare you guys for this, so I hope I'm not putting you too much spot. But is there any just like guys that you see just from like a fade perspective that you know you don't want to touch with the ten foot pole? Yes, um, Daniel Suarez. Uh, he might pop on some of like the projections and stuff, but that's because of his data from the previous years. He's in a different car this year. He's in a different team, and the the equipment is not as good. So uh, he, he's one that kind of really scares me that people might gravitate towards. But um, if they look at like background stats and stuff, it's not apples to apples. Interesting. How about you? Too? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say Suarez looked like a trap when I was looking at it. That's why I went with Paris. Suarez has got this thing about him. Like something always happens. He's always <laughs> in a, he's always into the wall or he's got a pit lane violation. Like there's, you can never watch bet on Suarez and then watch the race because he's going to just drive you mad every single time. He's like Ricky Stenhouse. Every time you watch Ricky Stenhouse, you're just waiting for the crash to happen. That's why they call him Recky. That, that doesn't uh, sound like somebody I want at all. Um, I'm going to ask Andrew one question. I see on your projections, Ryan Blaney sticks out from a, uh, from a salary perspective that you have 
all the way down. I think like your 20th ranked guy. Um, is there just anything wrong with him? Just the, the high price sticks out to me for where he's, he's ranked down there. Uh, he might, he's actually had a pretty good season. Um, I think it's just more that he's had some bad luck. Again, maybe it was his practice data from, uh, let's see, last he's ranked 15th for like all his like practice data and stuff. And the way my model, like I set it up for this week, I, I change it from week to week, depending on track and situation. Sure. But what we're looking at is like 50% of like the track experience and then 25% of what they've done in the 2020 season, and then 25% of what they qualified from uh, Darlington last year. Okay. So uh, one of the biggest things that will weigh a driver down is I really look at their DM, DNF, their do not, did not finish percentage, mm -hmm. because uh, the higher it is then that, my model is going to lower what their projected finish place is going to be. So um, he's a, uh, he wrecked out of one race this year, so he's got a 25%. Okay. Um, so nothing like a huge flag on him, but, you know, not – No, no. He, and, and he, he, he's got a top uh, six uh, pit crew, too. I, and actually, with usually what I'll play in a GPP every single race is I will play all four of the, or three of the Penske cars. I'll take Keselowski, Blaney, and Logano and put uh -huh. them together and then, like, put some other guys around them because – when that team is on, it's on, and, you know, you, you want to catch it. Love, love that strategy. Well, we're, we're nearing the end, so I'm going to kick it to each of y'all. I want you to give uh, everybody the top guy in cash that um, you are definitely building around, and then in GPP, um, do that. So actually, go ahead and maybe give one or two for each spot uh, so those watching and listening can, can start their lineups out. Tim, you are Andrew. You want to go ahead and go? Sure. Uh, I'm going to build my cash lines, and I haven't talked about them yet. Around Ty Dillon, Ty Dillon on uh, DK is 5600. I see him. He's starting 33rd. I see him gaining anywhere from eight to to ten place points, and uh, he definitely should come back. You want to look for about five X in NASCAR, and um, that's where he should be. So uh, he's another one like Chris Buescher that's probably never going to win the race. I mean, he's gotten up into like top tens and, and stuff before, but I think he's a really good, um, solid value to start building upon. Love it. Yeah. My, my top pick this week, probably going to go, go to Eric Jones at that 20th spot and his upside at as a top five. I'm just going to throw, he's got the salary too. at 92. You could play two players. At, you could go two two at the top at, you know, 11, 10 grand. Or you can go down to Eric Jones, save yourself some money, and then maybe not play two value punts and maybe grab someone in the middle of the sevens like uh, Austin Dillon or or maybe uh, Chris Buescher, I think, was 7K. So you can get more Chris Buescher if you get more Eric Jones, and then you have more chances to get two, tr two drivers from the 20s into the top 10, top 15. Love that. Why don't you go, TK, and if you were, who would be your, your, your top end guy? Top end, probably, I ain't talked about, my my thoughts on Keselowski because the competition caution it kind of scares me but I was looking over the pit stall uh selection and Keselowski has the fourth pit stall selection so it's not like he has a terrible pit stall selection he's still near the top with his with his starting position so you know as long as his pit crew can keep him you know up front all day he has a good opportunity to lead some laps and pay off that salary and be, and be the dominator type of guy. And be like, a dominator, yeah. How about you, Andrew? Near the top end, who are, who are you looking at or who's going to be like your stud? Uh, Harvick, I think, right. like having the first pit stall, just the, the tire, um, the pit team, I think he's got a lot of positive things going for him. And then not like super high at the top, but I, I think, again, my another guy I'm not going to pay up for, but in like kind of the mid-range that I really love is Kurt Busch. Got it. Like it. So I'm going to get one, your one um, – actually, we'll do this. I didn't prepare you guys for this again. I keep surprising you all. But um, <laughs> I was going to say we'll do our GPP, but we did, We spent some time that. Give me the race winner, Tim. Who's going to win the race? I'm going with Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin. Like it. Andrew, who you got winning? I'm going to go with Harvick. Kevin Harvick. We'll, 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 we'll see how you guys do. Uh, <laughs> 
and, and we'll keep tracking it. But guys, this was fun. Thank you so much for the time. I really hope everybody enjoys. This is the first uh, NASCAR pod and video we've done. Um, really looking forward to this being a weekly thing with the guys. Um, Absolutely. You know, and for myself, I, I learned a ton. So yeah. I, I appreciate that. And uh, last thing I'll just mention, guys, sports is freaking yes. bad. We have, Finally. It's, it's Saturday, 8 a.m. right now as we're doing. We got Bundesliga. We're going to be do, jumping off here soon with some massive prize pools. Then we got, um, I think, TK Golf this week. PGA is back. We have a millionaire maker for Colonial. For Colonial. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, we have a millionaire maker for NASCAR tomorrow. Like, it, it's coming back with a vengeance. Um, we're still working at FSI in terms of all the plans, but right now things are still free. Um, some things will start going a little bit behind, like for premium members, but we're going to have all sorts of specials for you guys. So please check out the site, fsidfs.com. Again, this weekend, everything's free. So uh, join up, talk with these guys, along with a great community of DFS players, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Guys, thank you so much. Good luck this weekend, and take care. See you. Good luck.